Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family. You might recognize this spot from the idyllic place that I recorded this week's uncut video. Pretty nice. When, in today's video, I'm going to be sitting down with Zach from Hustle Media Pro. If you watched this video right here, then you might remember that I have started diving into using Husbandry Pro for my own animal keeping and tracking purposes. And um, I'm gonna jump into the settings with Zach and kind of walk through some of the questions. I'm also, also gonna ask him about um, different species and, and why or why they are not going to be adding different species that aren't currently on the platform. Um, so I wanted you guys to just kind of be able to sit in and listen as I ask questions. And if you have questions of your own about the program, I would appreciate if you left them in the comment below so that way next time we do a video like this, we can uh, ask Zach those questions and plan to do like maybe a regular monthly segment with him the way you can go through and, and cause there's so much you can do. As you'll see in this video, like we're just gonna go through the general settings for the most part. And it's kind of mind blowing what can be done. So check it out. I'm gonna start with I think that should be that should be good right there. So here's here's what I got. I mean, there's the dashboard, obviously. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, sweet. So I don't, you know, I haven't featured any animals yet or or any of that. I've got my feeders in there, obviously. I haven't created any racks yet. I know that's something that you can do. Um, yeah, and you can customize all of these. Like you can completely change what you even see on the screen. My screen looks nothing like this. Gosh, are you talking like colors and everything? Oh, everything. Like what panels you're seeing right there, the order the panels are in. Um, you know, like mine has a big window and there's like four big panels with a quick button. It's a big bar that you can turn on. It's really helpful when you're using the application on your phone. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, usually like, you know, you load in all your animals and that can be a bit of a challenge with, uh, especially with the reptile scan import just because everything in theirs is freeform fields. So it's not like, you know, if you're coming from one of the other systems where like you have to put in male, female, you have to put in your genetics, like, you know, reptile scan, it's free form. You just type everything in. So yours doesn't look like the next guy's. And so that is a little bit of a problem that, you know, it's just, it makes it faster than hand typing them out though. So, but once you get them in and you got a collection like your size and stuff, I usually recommend you go straight to settings and just go through everything in settings and get everything set up the way you want the whole system to work and work. So just all, all this stuff, the animal settings, the gen general settings. So that's, yes, that's yes. Wow. There's, a, there's good I thought, settings there because the system can do a lot. Gotcha. Uh, but really you want to get the animals in. You want to get labels made for all of your animals. So you have, you know, you need QR codes to scan to record your activities and such. So you want right. to get everything, your labels. Um, and then you want to go through settings and have sure everything set up to where it is. I usually do recommend the settings first because if you're going to use like a public QR label versus a private QR label, you'll want to go ahead and have that setting in there so you don't have to reprint all of your labels later if you messed up because by default they're private QRs, but you can turn them to public. And what that does is, you know, the public, any random person can come up with their camera and scan your QR and they'll get access to certain information that you give them access to versus the private QR, which is just not going to do anything unless you're the one scanning it from inside of your application. Now, can you make it custom? So can you make a QR that for the same animal that's one that's private and one that's not? Or Okay, so the way it works is whenever you make your QR uh, public, at that time, there's a setting in there where you can turn on what the people see whenever they see that. They don't they don't see this whole system like you have. It's more of like what they would see if they went to your store from inside of here and looked at your information on there. You know, they're seeing a picture of the animal that you have loaded in the store or something, possibly pictures of the adults if you have that feature turned on, you know, feedings, um, any kind of recorded information that you want them to see. Oh, so and, you can choose what you want, what, what they get to oh, see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So if you're going to be doing any kind of shows whatsoever, if this is for something other than just like strictly personal animal care, like if, you, if you're producing animals that you're looking to move to the market at some point, it's pretty much a no-brainer that you want to use a public QR code there. Yes, yes, definitely. And yeah. that's right there in your general settings. That's, you know, in your first screen of settings. 
Oh, you can even feature like tell how you want the date to be read out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because you know people were like, oh man, I just my old system did this. Oh, we'll just go here, change this one setting. Now it looks like that for you. Well, you weren't joking. I I remember when we were chatting a little bit ago. You you had said that like we could do a whole video just on settings. I <laughs> see this. It's not a joke. You could even choose. You can choose what what temperature units you're using. Oh yeah. You know, I mean. We're a Canadian-based company, but most of our users are in America, so it's obvious we're going to have some options for that. Okay, low feeder notification. Yes, please. Um, current weight on breeding plan. I, so, wow. So you can choose all this stuff. What? What is? Um, you know, let's just go through this stuff. Some, some of these you can access from other screens. Like, uh, I can't list specific ones off the top of my head, but some of their screens have individual settings in the screen, and we have what we call screen settings. And you can toggle some of this stuff, but you want to go through here because all the settings are going to be in here mostly. Gotcha. And so reduced feeder inventory, unrefused feeding, I, I would say. So that's basically like if somebody's like has a live animal or something, like they have a live rat in there and they didn't eat it, and then they take it back out, like that, if that's their process, then they would turn this um, to yes because reduced feeder inventory on refused feeding. Uh, that, that's usually actually for people who feed frozen thaw because you're not going to refreeze it. Right. So, uh, so, so I would say, refuse, if they were I would say yes, that. actually, because I'm, I'm frozen. I use frozen thaw. So yeah, like you said, if I'm going to like feed it something else, basically. Um, yeah. Like if I, if I enter any kind of feeding, whether it's a refused feeding or a feeding, it needs to lower my inventory because I threw that away. I gave it to someone else. I did something with it. Yeah. Okay, so we have Fahrenheit, um, animal status, and feeding notification. What, what does this mean? Okay, so this right here, whenever you're looking at uh, your feeding notifications, like it'll tell you, you can set it up to tell you which animals need to be fed. Um, if you want animals that are sold to be considered, to show up on that list, that's your toggle switch for it. If you want animals that are on hold, like my personal one, I have hold on. Yeah. An animal B, an animal that is on hold, is in my care, it still needs to be fed. An animal that's sold, I don't mark them as sold until they leave my care. Same. Um, you know, but some you have some people, you know, it's it's for everybody. Some people don't consider it consider it sold the second you pay me for it. If right. I'm not shipping it for two weeks, and it's in their system as sold. And so they would want theirs to still show up in the feeder system, you know, like as needing to be fed. Gotcha. And then what what is this? Use default data automatically on two-step activity scan. Um, that's going to be more of your, uh, evolved features where you're doing like multiple activities at one time, say you're wanting to record a weight and a pairing. Well, if you have that turned on and you try to do the additional activity for pairing, it's just going to go ahead and save that. And it's going to default, have the mail in there that was in there the last time you paired with them instead of taking you to another screen for you to verify and go through the steps. It's, it's a shortcut step is what that is. Gotcha. All right, so after you record, oh, you can choose what happens after you record your activity. You go back to the primary page or record another activity, redirect animal list. I guess I'll just have to play with it and find out what, 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 which one of those will work for me. Yeah, um, like if you're going through doing a bunch of activities at once, you want to go with like record another activity. Um, if, you're, uh, if you use it a lot from the computer, some people don't like it about the redirect to the animal list because like you'll go in, you'll scan an animal, um, you'll put in their activities and then boom, it'll redirect you to the animal list. And then you have to go back, find your animal. And, you know, but if you're going through, like I'm doing like a hundred weights on a hundred different animals at once. So I like mine to redirect to record another activity. So it's just boop, wait, enter, boop, wait, enter, boop. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I might, I might do that. We'll, we'll see what, what works for me when, I, when we come down. Let's see, automatically hide animals on breeding plan. Um, why would you do that? Okay, so that's if you were going to make your breeding plan public. You can publish your breeding plan. Now, from the breeding plan page, you can individually turn uh, certain ones private. So, like, I don't want you to know that I'm working, say, Zawadi. Um, and so I'm going to hide my Zawadi so I can send people the link or they can see it in my store and be like, oh, let me see their breeding plans because I've turned it on public where you can see my breeding plans. They're going to be able to see all my breeding plans, except for that one that I turned private. Gotcha. Let's see, rack view line bottom, decimal numbers and weights, decimal numbers and follicle size. So it's just allowing you to use decimals or not or whole numbers. Yeah. Um, 
a last second feeder item on rack view. This is this is a if lot. You're gonna, if you're going to utilize the rack view, you probably want to have that one on. I'll just tell you. All right. What what is rack view? Um, rack view is where like you're going to set up your racks in the screen, and you have a little virtual picture of your rack, and you can assign the tubs that they're in, and you can like go and do bulk activities by rack. You know, like go and feed the whole rack, but exclude a couple stuff like that. Move them around. Wait, wait. You can have a virtual picture of your rack. Uh, sort of, yeah, it's a grid layout, you know, but it's got your default racks in there, like your commercials, or you can do a custom rack build out where you tell it, you know, I've got three levels of two here, one level of one, one level of three, and you can build out like your custom racks and stuff what? like that. Where is that? That is in racks and cages. Scroll up a little bit, see racks and cages, and uh, just browse racks. There's nothing in there yet because you haven't set any up, but because right. uh, and you do have a lot of cages, but uh, you can set you so like your wall of enclosures that you have. I see in your videos, you can set that up like a rack, and then have your racks set up as racks in there, and then everything is on the rack page. Or you can set your cages up as individual cages in the cage section and put in like individual dimensions and sizes of different enclosures. Crazy. So how would I? Can can we? I mean, I know that the settings is obviously. I I'm, I might be going on a tangent here, but <laughs> there, there's so much. There's so much. It's like I get excited when I start playing with it. I'm like, I still find stuff. Like, oh, let me set this up. All right, let's let's save that for another video. Let's just keep exploring the set because, like, you, I think you're right. Settings is its own video. Um, because there's a lot. We, we only, we're only in the general settings. There are ten other things in settings here the general the general one is the it is the longest in the settings thing you know that's the one and you know you'll find a lot of stuff in there i skim over it all the time and i'm like oh i can't find it i go back to general and i'm like oh it was in there i just missed it <laughs> gotcha there's a lot on this screen yeah lock panels on so, so these are a lot of things that if you just the more and more you play with the program the more these will start to make sense well, um, you know and this is a lot of stuff we added for individual users they're like oh hey this keeps happening all the time and I want it to be like this. And it's like, you know, we, we're big on not changing the whole system for everybody because one person wants it. But yeah. if that one person wants it, somebody else wants it. Let's see if what can we do. And let's add a switch for it to where you can make it that way on your system if that's how you like it. Gotcha. Dude, one thing I would rec recommend, like I noticed carpet pythons aren't on here yet as far as like an individual. At least I, I didn't see them. I, I put them as other snakes for my one carpet python. But sure. All of the Morelia guys I know are crazy about keeping records. And so if you had something, if you had carpet pythons in here and all the different morphs and like some of those guys keep like family trees going back, like to the original, those guys would be. We, I know we have, we have a lineage section, which will build it out sort of kind of how the carpet guys use. You're like, I've got some Nick Mutton animals and stuff and I've seen his little record looks kind of like a dog pedigree with the pictures and stuff and your tree we have your animal lineage right now and you can go back and build that out a little bit um someone brought it up in our last or sorry two podcasts ago and it's one of the things i was wanting to look at about building that out making it a little bit better so you know for like the green tree guys and the morelia guys um you know with full picture support and everything uh and you do have that through our uh the we have, we have a system whenever you're breeding out your system, breeding out your animals and everything, it builds out your lineage for you over time as you go and stuff. So it will keep up and grow with you and automatically build out that family tree for you. Right. It's in the, in the breeding section. Gotcha. Well, we don't need to, that was just a, a suggestion. Like, cause I noticed, like I said, I don't think carpets are in here yet. Is that, is that correct? Um, man, I would have to double check. I'd, I don't think all the individual species are in there, but I did. Th I thought we had just Morelia in general. Let me pull it up and look on my screen. I'll, I'll look on here. I don't remember because I have, you know, I've got five different species of Morelia here. So, and I remember, okay. I know I had to set mine up. When I go to uh, animal, like if I'm going to edit my carpet python here, I'll go to. Yeah, that's Holly, my carpet python. So I'll edit her. And then for animal type, um, you, know, you got short-tailed blood pythons, um, reticulated, 
uh, boa constrictor, corn snake, ball python. Um, okay, and so on the left hand side, go down to settings. And go to animal settings, the third one down. All right, and let's see here. Okay, so did you go, you went through and did the tutorial, right? I don't know why. I did. You don't have... okay, I did. So turn on, I know turn on your snakes. Do you have anything else? Click activate the active toggle switch on the right for those. There you go. Um, so you turn on what you plan on using, like animal, right. your lizards, snakes, you turn that on, and then you go down here and you see your little purple toggle switches on the right hand side. That's going to be your options that you have that have, uh, showed up in there. Right. Morelia in there. Yeah, no, I would have, I, I went, I okay, off so, on. so now here is where mine's going to look much different than yours. There's a little, little purple, plus, purple, pink plus sign bottom right hand corner there. And you can add in whatever species you like with your genetics in there. Your common name, scientific. Um, you can even put in the average incubation time. And so, like, whenever you go to create a clutch, it'll default to put in, like, your cook time on your eggs based off of what you enter in this screen here. Right. And I did notice that, like, even when I was doing the the entry of the animals, that there was a thing where you could add create your own morph. Like, I guess if you, like, have a morph that you're wor working on, you're proving out, like, you could create your own thing, whether it was recessive or incomplete dominant and you could put that in, plug that in there oh yeah trait line you know set it up however you want to set it up so my uh, question there is, as, as it applies to this like if you create carpet pythons you know if you create um and and, the, and put in plug in your morphs there since it's not in here already is that going to be I, I can't imagine this is the way it would work but that would be amazing if it did are you going to be able to or will other people then be able to log carpet pythons and have those morphs in in their husbandry pro or would you have to do it custom like this? Uh, it's going to be custom for you. Uh, we've looked at adding other species. I mean, it's something we definitely have the capacity to do. And we, we, for this one specifically, we've considered Morph Market the subject matter expert on genetics. And so we have the genetics that Morph Market has. Um, but currently, it's only pulled for the species that we have that are in our system. Gotcha. North Market has evolved with what species they have now, and we've left our species the same. And the snag we hit on that, and we were actually discussing this two weeks ago, is that what we run into is like, this system's been out for four years. You've already went in and added in your Morelia. Well, what happens when we go in and then we add in Morelia? You've added in custom genetics for it and everything. Well, our system's going to put in all of the other genetics that are coming over from Morph Market, that's going to come into your system, which is not going to work right with your animals that you set up custom. So what ends up happening is you're going to have to go back through all of your animals and re-put them in with the proper genetic that matches up with what we've imported and put in our system, or it's not going to work right with the system when we get a conflict there. So gotcha. that's something we decide, you know, we're going to look at it internally. Um, we might just add them and then People can, people, new users can pick them up going forward. The old users will just keep what they have unless they feel like going and turning on the new systems. Um, I don't know. It's something we've had to look at, but we've been talking about it a lot lately. Okay. Well, hey, um, I think that this will be plenty of information. Just the fact that all these different settings here, I think for this, for the purpose of this video, I think this will be, this will be good. Well, thank you guys for watching. I um, hope that you're all having a wonderful weekend and whatever you're gonna be doing, that you'll be doing a good time with it. Again, leave a comment down below. Let us know if you have any questions. I would love to address them in the comments or a future video. So, oh, hair's feeling nice. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next one. Aloha.